Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Chapter 12 The Polyjuice Potion They stepped off the stone staircase on the top, and Professor McGonagall rapped at the door. It opened silently, and that they entered. Professor McGonagall advised Harry to wait and left him there, on my own. Harry seemed round. One issue turned into positive, of all the teacher's offices. Harry had visited so far, this year, Dumbledore's become through a ways the most. Thrilling. If he hadn't been scared out of his wits that he became approximately to be thrown out of faculty, he would have been very pleased to have a chance to look around it. It was a huge and delightful round room, full of funny little noises. A range of curious silver gadgets stood on spindle-legged tables, whirring and emitting little puffs of smoke. The partitions were included with snapshots of antique headmasters and headmistresses, all of whom were slumbering lightly of their frames. There has been also an sizable, claw-footed desk and, sitting on a shelf at the back of it, a shabby, tattered wizard's hat, the sorting hat. Harry hesitated. He cast a cautious eye around the drowsing witches, and wizards on the partitions. Truly, it couldn't harm if he took the hat down, and attempted it on again? Just to see, just to ensure it had placed him in the right residence. He walked quietly around the table, lifted the hat from its shelf, and reduced it slowly onto his head. It was a good deal too large and slipped down over his eyes, just because it had completed the remaining time he'd positioned it on. Harry stared at the black inner of the hat, waiting. Then a small voice stated in his ear, Be on your bonnet, Harry Potter? Air, yes, Harry muttered. Air, sorry to trouble you, I wanted to ask. You've been wondering whether or not I placed you inside the right house, said the hat neatly. Sure. You were particularly hard to location. But I stand. By way of what I stated before, Harry's coronary heart leapt, you'll have executed. Properly in Slytherin. Harry's stomach plummeted. He grabbed the point of the hat and pulled. It off. It hung limply in his hand, grubby, and diminished. Harry driven it back. Onto its shelf, feeling sick. You're wrong, he said aloud to the still and silent hat. It didn't flow. Harry sponsored away, looking it. Then an unusual, gagging noise in the back of him. Made him wheel round. He wasn't alone in any case. Status on a golden perch, behind the door. Turned into a decrepit searching chook that resembled a half a plucked turkey. Harry. Stared at it and the fowl seemed balefully lower back making its gagging noise. Again. Harry notion it appeared very ill. Its eyes have been stupid and, while. Harry watched, a pair more feathers fell out of its tail. Harry changed into simply questioning that each one he wanted changed into, for Dumbledore's pet. Chicken to die even as he became alone within the office with it, when the chicken burst into. Flames. Harry yelled in surprise, and sponsored away into the table. He appeared. Feverishly round in case there has been a glass of water somewhere but. Couldn't see one, the fowl, meanwhile, had end up a fireball, it gave one. Loud shriek and next second there was not anything but a smoldering pile of ash. On the ground, the office door opened. Dumbledore got here in, looking very somber. Professor, Harry gasped. Your chicken, I couldn't do something, he. Simply stuck hearth. To Harry's astonishment, Dumbledore smiled. About time, too, he said. He's been searching dreadful for days, I've. Been telling him to get a circulate on. He chuckled on the greatly surprised look on Harry's face. Fox is a phoenix, Harry. Phoenix is burst into flame when it is time for them to die and are reborn from the ashes. Watch him, Harry regarded, down in time to look a tiny, wrinkled, new child, hen pockets. Head out of the ashes. It became quite as unpleasant because the vintage one. It's a shame you needed to see him on a burning day, stated Dumbledore, seating himself behind his desk. 
He's truly very good looking most of the time, great purple and gold plumage. Fascinating creatures, phoenixes. They are able to deliver immensely heavy masses, their tears have recovery powers, and that they make exceedingly faithful pets. Inside the surprise of Fox catching fireplace, Harry had forgotten what he was. Therefore, but all of it came back to him as Dumbledore settled himself inside the excessive chair at the back of the table and stuck Harry along with his penetrating, mild blue stare. Earlier than Dumbledore ought to speak any other phrase, but, the door of the workplace flew open with an almighty bang and Hagrid burst in, a wild look in. His eyes, his balaclava perched on top of his shaggy black head and the lifeless poultry nonetheless swinging from his hand. It wasn't Harry, Professor Dumbledore, said Hagrid urgently. I was, talkin' to him seconds before that kid changed into discovered, he in no way had time, sir. Dumbledore tried to say something, but Hagrid went ranting on, waving the hen around in his agitation, sending feathers everywhere. It is able to be ben him, I'll swear it in front o' oh, the ministry, o' oh, magic if. I have to. Hagrid, I. Yevi got the incorrect boy, sir, I realize Harry by no means. Hagrid, said Dumbledore, loudly. I do no longer suppose that Harry attacked. Those people. Oh, said Hagrid, the poultry falling limply at his facet, proper. I'll wait. Outside then, headmaster. And he stomped out searching, embarrassed. You don't suppose it changed into me, professor? Harry repeated hopefully as. Dumbledore brushed poultry feathers off his desk. No, Harry, I don't, stated Dumbledore, although his face changed into somber. Once more. But I still want to talk to you. Harry waited nervously at the same time as Dumbledore considered him, the suggestions of. His lengthy palms, collectively. I have to ask you, Harry, whether there's whatever you'd like to tell me. He said lightly, anything in any respect. Harry didn't recognize what to say. He notion of Malfoy shouting, you'll be next, mudbloods, and of the polyjuice potion simmering away in moaning Myrtle's lavatory. Then he idea of the disembodied voice he had heard twice and remembered what Ron had said, listening to voices no one else can pay attention isn't an amazing signal, even in the Wizarding International. He idea, too, approximately what every person turned into saying approximately him, and his developing dread that he become some way linked with Salazar Slytherin. No, said Harry. There isn't whatever, Professor. The double assault on Justin, and nearly headless Nick, turned what had hitherto been anxiety into actual panic. Curiously, it turned into almost headless Nick's destiny that appeared to fear human beings most. What ought to, in all likelihood, try this to a ghost? Human beings asked each other, what horrible energy should harm someone who become already lifeless? There was almost a stampede to e-book seats on the Hogwarts Express so that scholars could cross home for Christmas. At this fee, will be the simplest ones left, Ron told Harry and Hermione. Us, Malfoy, Crab, and Goyle. What a jolly excursion it's going to be. Crab and Goyle, who usually did something Malfoy did, had signed up to live over the vacations, too. But Harry becomes satisfied that the general public have been leaving. He turned into uninterested in people skirting round him inside the corridors, as though he had been approximately to sprout fangs or spit poison, tired of all of the muttering, pointing, and hissing as he passed. Fred and George, however, located all this very funny. They went out of their way to march ahead of Harry down the corridors, shouting, Make manner for the inheritor of Slytherin, significantly evil wizard coming through. Percy changed into deeply disapproving of this behavior. It isn't always a giggling be counted, he said coldly. Oh, get out of the manor, Percy, said Fred. Harry's in a hurry. Yeah, he's off to the Chamber of Secrets and Techniques for a cup of tea together with his 
Feigned servant, said George, chortling. Ginny didn't find it a laugh either. Oh, don't, she wailed each time, Fred requested Harry loudly who he changed into. Planning to assault next, or whilst George pretended to ward Harry off with. A big clove of garlic when they met. Harry didn't mind, it made him experience higher that Fred and George, at least, concept the concept of his being Slytherin's heir, changed, into quite ludicrous. However their antics regarded to be hectic Draco Malfoy, who looked an increasing number of sour whenever he saw them at it. It's because he's bursting to mention it's really him, said Ron knowingly, you know the way he hates anybody beating him at anything, and you're getting all the credit score for his grimy work. No longer for long, said Hermione, in a glad tone. The polyjuice. Potions almost equipped. We'll be getting the truth out of him any day now. A remaining the time period ended, and a silence deep as the snow on the grounds. Descended on the fort. Harry discovered it non-violent, instead of gloomy, and loved the fact that he, Hermione, and the Weasleys had the run of Gryffindor Tower, which meant they might play Exploding Snap loudly, without bothering every person, and practice dueling in non-public. Fred, George, and Ginny had chosen to live at school as opposed to visit Bill in Egypt with Mr. and Mrs. Weasley. Percy, who disapproved of what he termed their childish behavior, didn't spend an awful lot time inside the Gryffindor commonplace. Room. He had already instructed them pompously that he became best staying over Christmas as it was his obligation as a prefect to assist the academics. At some stage in this bothered time, Christmas morning dawned, cold and white. Harry and Ron, the only ones left in their dormitory, have been woken very early by Hermione, who burst in, fully dressed and carrying provides for them each. Wake up, she said loudly, pulling again the curtains at the window. Hermione, you're no longer supposed to be in right here, said Ron, shielding his eyes against the light. Merry Christmas to you, too, stated Hermione, throwing him his present. I've been up for nearly an hour, adding extra lace wings to the potion. It's equipped. Harry sat up, abruptly extensive wakeful. Are you positive? Effective, said Hermione, transferring Scabbers the rat in order that she should sit down. Down at the give-up of Ron's four-poster. If we're going to do it, I say it. Should be tonight. At that second, Hedwig swooped into the room, sporting a totally small package in her beak. Hello, said Harry happily as she landed on his mattress. Are you speaking? To me once more? She nibbled his ear in an affectionate type of way, which become a far higher gift than the only that she had added him, which grew to become out to be from the Dursleys. They had dispatched Harry a toothpick and a note telling him to find out whether or not he'd be capable of live at Hogwarts for the summer holiday, too. The rest of Harry's Christmas offers have been far extra excellent. Hagrid had dispatched him a large tin of treacle toffee, which Harry decided to soften by using the fireplace earlier than eating. Ron had given him a e-book called Flying with the Cannons, a e-book of exciting statistics about his favorite Quidditch crew, and Hermione had bought him a luxurious eagle feather quill. Harry opened the final present to discover a new, hand-knitted sweater from Mrs. Weasley and a large plum cake. He examined her card with a sparkling surge of guilt, considering Mr. Weasley's car, which hadn't been seen on account that it's crash with the whomping willow, and the bout of rule-breaking he and Ron have been planning subsequent no person, no longer even someone dreading taking polyjuice potion later, may want to fail to experience Christmas dinner at Hogwarts. The super hall looked surprising. No longer only have been there a dozen frost-covered Christmas timber and thick streamers of holly and mistletoe. Crisscrossing the ceiling, however enchanted snow, turned into falling, heat and dry, from the ceiling. Dumbledore led them in a few of his preferred carols. Hagrid booming increasingly more loudly with each goblet of eggnog he consumed. Percy, who hadn't observed that Fred had bewitched his prefect, 
badge and order that it now read, Pinhead, kept asking them all what they were. Sniggering at. Harry didn't even care that Draco Malfoy became making loud, snide feedback about his new sweater from the Slytherin desk. With a chunk. Of good fortune, Malfoy would be getting his comeuppance in a few hours' time. Harry and Ron had slightly completed their 0.33 helpings of Christmas. Pudding whilst Hermione ushered them out of the hall to finalize their plans for the evening. We nevertheless want a chunk of the humans you're converting into, said Hermione. Depend of factly, as although she were sending them to the grocery store for laundry detergent. And glaringly, it'll be nice if you can get something of crabs and goyles, their Malfoy's satisfactory pals, he'll inform them. Anything. And we additionally need to make sure the real crab and goyle can't burst in on us even as we're interrogating him. I've were given it all worked out, she went on smoothly, ignoring Harry's, and Ron's stupefied faces. She held up plump chocolate cakes. I've stuffed. Those with the easy snoozing draft. All you have to do is ensure. Crab and Goyle find them. You know how greedy they are, there. Sure to consume them. When they're asleep, pull out some in their hairs and cover them in a broom closet. Harry and Ron appeared incredulously at each other. Hermione, I don't think. That would move significantly incorrect. However Hermione had a steely glint in her eye no longer unlike the one professor. McGonagall sometimes had. The potion can be vain without crabs and Goyle's hair, she stated. Sternly. You do need to research Malfoy, don't you? Oh, all proper, all right, stated Harry. However, what approximately you? Whose hair? Are you ripping out? I've already got mine, stated Hermione brightly pulling a tiny bottle out of her pocket and displaying them the unmarried hair, internal it. Keep in mind. Millicent Bulstrode wrestling with me on the dueling club? She left this on my gowns whilst she become looking to strangle me. And he or she's long gone home for Christmas, so I'll just have to tell the Slytherins I've decided to come. Again, whilst Hermione had bustled off to check at the polyjuice potion once more, Ron became to Harry with a doom-weighted down expression. Have you ever heard of a plan where such a lot of things ought to move wrong? However to Harry's and Ron's utter amazement, degree one of the operation went. Just as smoothly as Hermione had stated. They lurked in the deserted. Front hall after Christmas tea, watching for Crab and Goyle, who had. Remained by myself at the Slytherin table, shoveling down fourth helpings of. Trifle. Harry had perched the chocolate cakes on the stop of the banisters. Once they spotted Crab and Goyle, coming out of the high-quality hall, Harry and Ron hid quick in the back of a match of armor next to the, the front door. How thick are you able to get? Ron whispered ecstatically as Crab gleefully talked about the desserts to Goyle and grabbed them. Grinning. Stupidly, they crammed the desserts whole into their massive mouths. For a second, both of them chewed greedily, appears of triumph on their faces. Then, without the smallest alternate of expression, they both keeled over. Backward onto the floor. By way of far the toughest element was hiding them within the closet across the hall. When they had been safely stowed among the buckets and mops, Harry yanked. Out a couple of the bristles that included Goyle's forehead and Ron pulled. Out several of Crab's hairs. They also stole their shoes, due to the fact their personal had been a ways too small for crab and goyle length, foot then, still greatly surprised. At what they had just accomplished, they sprinted as much as moaning myrtles. Bathroom. They could hardly ever see for the thick black smoke issuing from the stall in, which Hermione changed into stirring the cauldron. Pulling their robes up over their faces, Harry and Ron knocked softly at the door. Hermione? They heard the scrape of the lock and Hermione emerged, bright confronted. And searching anxious. In the back of her they heard the glup glup of the bubbling, glutinous potion. Three glass tumblers stood ready on the toilet. Seat. Did you get them? 
Hermione asked breathlessly. Harry confirmed her goyle's hair. Suitable, and that I sneaked these spare gowns out of the laundry, Hermione. Said, holding up a small sack. You'll want larger sizes when you're. Crab and Goyle. The three of them stared into the cauldron. Near up, the potion appeared. Like thick, darkish mud, effervescent sluggishly. I'm sure I've finished the whole lot right, said Hermione, nervously. Rereading the splotched page of most potendi potions. It looks as if the e-book says it ought to, as soon as we've drunk it, we'll have precisely an hour. Before we alternate lower back into ourselves, now what? Ron whispered. We separate it into three glasses, and add the hairs. Hermione ladled large dollops of the potion into each of the glasses. Then, her hand trembling, she shook Millicent Bulstrode's hair out of its bottle into the first glass. The potion hissed loudly like a boiling kettle and frothed madly. A second later, it had grew to become a sick sort of yellow. Ugh, essence of Millicent Bulstrode, said Ron, eyeing it with loathing. Guess it tastes disgusting. Upload yours, then, said Hermione. Harry dropped Goyle's hair into the middle glass and Ron positioned crabs. Into the last one. Both glasses hissed and frothed, Goyle's became the khaki. Color of a booger, crabs a dark, murky brown. Hold on, said Harry as Ron and Hermione reached for his or her glasses. We'd better not all drink them in right here. As soon as we become crab and Goyle, we received match. And Millicent Bulstrode's no pixie. Suitable questioning, said Ron, unlocking the door. We'll take separate stalls. Careful not to spill a drop of his polyjuice potion, Harry slipped into the center stall. Ready, he known as. Equipped, came Ron's and Hermione's voices. One, three. Pinching his nostril, Harry drank the potion down in large gulps. It tasted like overcooked cabbage. Right away, his insides commenced writhing as though he'd just swallowed. Stay snakes, doubled up, he puzzled whether he turned into going to be unwell. Then a burning sensation spread hastily from his stomach to the very ends of his hands and ft, subsequent, bringing him gasping to all fours, came a horrible melting feeling, as the pores and skin all over his body bubbled like hot wax, and earlier than his eyes, his hands started out to develop, the hands thickened, the nails broadened, the knuckles were bulging like bolts, his shoulders stretched painfully, and a prickling on his forehead informed him that hair changed into creeping down closer to his eyebrows, his robes ripped as his chest expanded like a barrel bursting its hoops, his feet have been agony in footwear four sizes too small. As suddenly as it had started, the whole lot stopped. Harry lay face down, on the stone-cold ground, being attentive to Myrtle gurgling morosely in the end. Restroom. With difficulty, he kicked off his footwear and stood up. So this became what it felt like, being Goyle. His big hand trembling, he pulled off his antique robes, which were placing a foot above his ankles, pulled on the spare ones, and laced up Goyle's boat-like shoes. He reached as much as brush his hair out of his eyes and met most effective the short growth of wiry bristles, low on his brow. Then he found out that his glasses had been clouding his eyes due to the fact Goyle glaringly didn't want them, he took them off and called, R. You two okay? Goyle's low rasp of a voice issued from his mouth. Yeah, came the deep grunt of crab from his proper. Harry unlocked his door and stepped in front of the cracked reflect. Goyle stared again at him out of dull, deep-set eyes. Harry scratched his ear. So did Goyle. Ron's door opened. They stared at every other. Besides that he appeared pale. And bowled over, Ron became indistinguishable from crab, from the pudding bowl haircut to the long, gorilla palms. That is fantastic, stated Ron, drawing close the reflect and prodding. Crab's flat nose. Implausible. We'd hire get going, said Harry, loosening the watch that was. 
cutting into Goyle's thick wrist. We've still got to find out where the Slytherin commonplace room is. I best desire we are able to discover a person to comply with. Ron, who had been looking at Ed Harry, stated, You don't recognize how bizarre. It's far to pure, Goyle thinking. He banged on Hermione's door. Come on, we want to head. A excessive pitched voice responded him, I, I don't suppose I'm going to come in any case. You pass on without me. Hermione, we recognize Millicent Bulstrode's unpleasant, nobody's going to recognize. It's you. No, really, I don't think I'll come. You hurry up, you're losing time. Harry checked out Ron, bewildered. That appears extra like Goyle, stated Ron. That's how he appears each. Time a instructor asks him a question. Hermione, are you okay, said Harry through the door. Exceptional, I'm satisfactory, move on. Harry checked out his watch. Five of their valuable sixty minutes had already passed. We'll meet you back here, all right, he said. Harry and Ron opened the door of the bathroom cautiously, checked that. The coast changed into clean, and spark off. Don't swing your hands like that, Harry muttered to Ron. Eh? Crab holds them form of stiff. How's this? Yeah, that's better, they went down the marble staircase. All they needed now changed into a Slytherin that they may observe, to the Slytherin commonplace room, however there. Became nobody around. Any thoughts, muttered Harry. The Slytherins always come up to breakfast from over there, stated. Ron, nodding at the doorway to the dungeons. The words had slightly left. His mouth while a girl with long, curly hair emerged from the doorway. Excuse me, stated Ron, hurrying as much as her. We've forgotten the manner to. Our common room. I beg your pardon, stated the girl stiffly. Our commonplace room? I'm a Ravenclaw. She walked away, looking suspiciously back at them. Harry and Ron hurried down the stone steps into the darkness, there. Footsteps echoing particularly loudly as Crab's and Goyle's large feet hit. The floor, feeling that this wasn't going to be as clean as that they had was hoping. The labyrinthine passages had been abandoned. They walked deeper and deeper below the college, constantly checking their watches to see how a great deal time they'd left. After one slash four of an hour, simply after they have been getting determined, they heard a sudden motion in advance. Ha, stated Ron excitedly. There's one among them now. The figure was rising from a side room. As they hurried nearer, however, their hearts sank. It wasn't a Slytherin, it became Percy. What are you doing down here, stated Ron in Marvel. Percy appeared affronted. That, he said stiffly, is none of your enterprise. It's Crab, isn't it? W-H, oh, yeah, said Ron. Nicely, get off to your dormitories, said Percy sternly. It's now not safe to go wandering around darkish corridors nowadays, you're, Ron pointed out. I, stated Percy, drawing himself up, am a prefect. Not anything's approximately to Assault me. A voice unexpectedly echoed at the back of Harry and Ron. Draco Malfoy become. Walking in the direction of them, and for the primary time in his existence, Harry changed into pleased. To see him. There you are, he drawled, looking at them. Have you been. Pigging out inside the wonderful hall all this time? I've been looking for you, I need to show you something absolutely humorous. Malfoy glanced witheringly at Percy, and what are you doing down here, Weasley, he sneered. Percy regarded outraged. You want to reveal a piece extra recognized to a college prefect, he stated. I don't like your mindset. Malfoy sneered and motioned for Harry and Ron to observe him. Harry almost stated something apologetic to Percy, however caught himself simply in time. He and Ron hurried after Malfoy who stated as they became the subsequent passage, that Peter Weasley. Percy, Ron, corrected him robotically. Something, stated Malfoy. 
I've noticed him sneaking around lots these days, and that, I wager, I know what he's as much as. He thinks he's going to capture Slytherins. Air unmarried surpassed. He gave a brief, derisive snort. Harry and Ron exchanged excited appears. Malfoy paused by using a stretch of naked, damp stone wall. What's the brand new password again, he stated to Harry. Air, stated Harry. Oh, yeah, pure blood, said Malfoy, no longer listening, and a stone door. Concealed inside the wall, slid open. Malfoy marched through it, and Harry, and Ron accompanied him. The Slytherin not unusual room became a protracted, low underground room with tough stone walls and ceiling from which round, greenish lamps were placing on chains. A hearth changed into crackling below an elaborately carved mantelpiece beforehand of them, and numerous Slytherins had been silhouetted around it in high-backed chairs. Wait right here, stated Malfoy to Harry and Ron, motioning them to a pair of empty chairs set again from the hearth. I'll go and get it, my father simply sent it to me. Thinking what Malfoy become going to reveal them, Harry and Ron Saturday down, doing their exceptional, to have a look at domestic. Malfoy came returned a minute later, keeping what gave the impression of a newspaper. Clipping. He thrust it under Ron's nose. That'll provide you with amusing, he stated. Harry noticed Ron's eyes widen in shock. He read the clipping quick, gave a very forced snicker, and passed it to Harry. It had been clipped out of the everyday profit, and it stated, Inquiry at the Ministry of Magic. Arthur Weasley, head of the Misuse of Muggle Artifacts Office, changed into, Nowadays find fifty galleons for bewitching a muggle vehicle. Mr. Lucius Malfoy, a governor of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, wherein the enchanted automobile crashed in advance this twelve months, known as these days, for Mr. Weasley's resignation. Weasley has introduced the ministry into disrepute, Mr. Malfoy advised. Our reporter. He is virtually not worthy to draw up our legal guidelines, and his ridiculous Muggle Protection Act ought to be scrapped right away. Mr. Weasley was unavailable for remark, despite the fact that his wife informed reporters to clear off or she'd set the own family ghoul on them. Properly, stated Malfoy impatiently as Harry handed the clipping back to him. Don't you believe you studied it's funny? Ha, ha, said Harry bleakly. Arthur Weasley loves muggles a lot, he should snap his wand in. Half of them pass and be a part of them, said Malfoy scornfully. You'd by no means recognize the Weasleys were pure bloods, the manner they behave. Ron's, or alternatively, Crab's, face become contorted with fury. What's up with you, Crab, snapped Malfoy. Stomachache, Ron grunted. Properly, go up to the health facility wing and provide all those mudbloods a kick. From me, said Malfoy, snickering. You understand, I'm amazed, the day, by day. Prophet hasn't reported these types of attacks yet, he went on, thoughtfully. I assume Dumbledore's trying to hush it all up. He'll be sacked if it doesn't. Stop quickly. Fathers always said vintage Dumbledore's the worst component that's ever took place to this region. He loves Muggleborns. A first-rate headmaster. Might by no means be let slime like that creepy in. Malfoy commenced taking photos with an imaginary camera and did a cruel but accurate impact of Colin, Potter, can I have your photograph, Potter? Can I have your autograph? Am I able to lick your shoes, please, Potter? He dropped his fingers and checked out Harry and Ron. What's the matter with you? A long way too late, Harry and Ron forced themselves to snicker, however Malfoy seemed glad, perhaps Crab and Goyle have been constantly slow at the uptake. St. Potter, the mudblood's buddy, said Malfoy, slowly. He's some other one with no right wizard feeling, or he wouldn't move round with. That jumped up, Granger mudblood. And those suppose he's Slytherins. Inheritor. Harry and Ron waited with bated breath, Malfoy changed into without a doubt seconds far away from telling them it was him, however then. I desire I knew who it's far, 
stated Malfoy petulantly. I ought to assist them. Ron's jaw dropped so that Crab looked even extra clueless than normal. Luckily, Malfoy didn't be aware, and Harry, wondering fast, stated, You. Need to have some idea who's in the back of all of it. You know I haven't, Goyle, how regularly do I have to tell you? Snapped Malfoy. And father won't tell me anything approximately the ultimate time. The chamber turned into open both. Of root, it become fifty years ago, so it turned into. Earlier than his time, but he's aware of all about it, and he says that it become all kept. Quiet, and it'll look suspicious if I understand an excessive amount of approximately it. But I realize one. Component, remaining time the Chamber of Secrets changed into opened, a mudblood died. So I wager it's a rely of time earlier than one among them's, killed this time. I hope it's Granger, he said with savor. Ron turned into clenching Crab's significant fists. Feeling that it'd be a chunk. Of a giveaway, if Ron punched Malfoy, Harry shot him a caution appearance, and stated, do you recognize if the person that opened the chamber last time was caught? Oh, yeah, whoever it changed into changed into expelled, said Malfoy. There. Likely nevertheless, in Azkaban. Azkaban, said Harry, confused. Azkaban, the wizard prison, Goyle, stated Malfoy, looking at him in disbelief. Absolutely, in case you were any slower, you'd be going backward. He shifted restlessly in his chair and stated, Father says to hold my head down and permit the air of Slytherin, get on with it, he says the faculty needs ridding of all of the mudblood dirt, but now not to get combined up in it. Of path, he's were given plenty on his plate in the meantime. You already know the Ministry of Magic. Rated our manner final week? Harry attempted to pressure Goyle's stupid face into a glance of concern. Yeah, stated Malfoy. Fortuitously, they didn't find a whole lot. Father's got a few very treasured darkish art stuff. However luckily, we've got our very own mystery. Chamber beneath the drawing room floor. Ho, stated Ron. Malfoy checked out him. So did Harry. Ron blushed. Even his hair become. Turning pink. His nose became additionally slowly lengthening, their hour turned into up, Ron became turning again into himself, and from the appearance of horror he turned into. All of sudden giving Harry, he should be, too. They each jumped to their foot medication for my belly, Ron grunted, and without further ado they. Sprinted the duration of the Slytherin not unusual room, hurled themselves at the stone wall, and dashed up the passage, hoping against YSH that Malfoy, hadn't noticed something. Harry could sense his FT slipping round in. Goyle's huge shoes, and had to hoist up his robes, as he shrank, they crashed up the steps into the darkish entrance corridor, which was full of a muffled pounding coming from the closet in which they'd locked Crab and Goyle. Leaving their shoes out of doors the closet door, they sprinted in there. Socks up the marble staircase, toward moaning Myrtle's restroom. Well, it wasn't a whole waste of time, Ron panted, final the toilet door behind them. I know we nonetheless haven't located out who's doing the assaults, but I'm going to write down to Dad the next day and tell him to check underneath the Malfoy's drawing room. Harry checked his face in the cracked replicate. He become returned to ordinary. He Positioned his glasses on as Ron hammered at the door of Hermione's stall. Hermione, come out, we've were given masses to tell you. Leave. Hermione squeaked. Harry and Ron checked out every other. What's the matter, said Ron. You have to be returned to everyday via now, we. Are, but moaning Myrtle glided all at once through the stall door. Harry had. By no means visible her searching so satisfied. Uhu, wait until you notice, she stated. It's lousy. They heard the lock slide again and Hermione emerged, sobbing, her. Robes pulled up over her head. What's up, said Ron uncertainly. Have you still were given Millicent's nose? Or something? 
Hermione let her gowns fall, and Ron backed into the sink. Her face turned into covered in black fur. Her eyes had become yellow and there had been long, pointed ears poking through her hair. It was a sea cat hair, she held. And Millicent Bulstrode am ought to have. A cat. And the pea potion isn't speculated to be used for animal. Adjustments. Oh, stated Ron. You'll be teased something dreadful, said Myrtle luckily. It's okay, Hermione, said Harry quickly. We'll take you as much as the sanatorium wing. Madame Pomfrey by no means asks too many questions. It took a long term to persuade Hermione to go away the restroom. Moaning Myrtle sped them on their manner with a hearty guffaw. Wait until absolutely everyone unearths out you were given a tale, 